In this episode of Animal Academy, Jeremy gets bitten by the bug. <laughs> Jeff visits a cat having a bad hair day. And we meet Lysia, who's devoted to chinchillas. Hi, I'm Sarah Ulmer. And I'm Jeremy Maguire. Welcome to Animal Academy. We're here today with two Shetland Sheepdogs, or Shelties. We've got Lewis here, who's five, and Dana, who's two. Now, you might think they look like miniature Lassies. That's because Lassie was a rough collie. And these guys, Shelties, have rough collie in their breeding heritage. They were used in the Shetland Islands for herding sheep. And like most herding dogs, they actually make great pets. Well, speaking of pets, I know if I were to move overseas, I would certainly want to take my dog Scooby with me. For sure. In our first story, we meet Lindsay, who helps people bring their pets from overseas to New Zealand. And thanks to people like her, it's a lot easier than you might think. Every year, around 10,000 people move from overseas to make a new home in New Zealand. For many families moving abroad, one of their first concerns is can they bring their pets? New Zealand has strict biosecurity laws, so animals coming from certain countries have to go into quarantine. And that's where Lindsay Ward comes in. I'm from Canterbury Quarantine Services and I've come down to Christchurch Airport today to pick up a little Maltese Terrier who's come all the way from Japan. Unless coming from Britain or Australia, all animals must go into quarantine for at least a month to make sure they are disease free. Over a year, there are around 1,700 animals arriving in Christchurch. Hello, Liz. Here's the dog XNZ90. On the day that they arrive, MAF meet them, and all they do at that point is make sure the seal number is on the documentation so they know it's not been opened since they left the country of origin um, and that they have an import permit. And at that point, they release them to us and we bring them out here so they're not opened at all at the airport. That doesn't happen until they reach Canterbury Quarantine Base one of four certified quarantine centres in New Zealand and the only one in the South Island. So we just remove that and then we're going to let Peach out for the first time. Oh, look. Good boy. <laughs> we try and give them a little bit of settling in time first. You don't want to go straight in handling them. They're really quite worried, so they're usually starving. One of our most common questions we get from the owners is, should we consider sedatives? And I always say, yes, if you need them, you should take them. <laughs> Animals are this ex-Brit's passion. It wasn't until she had to ship her own animals to New Zealand that she fully understood a pet owner's anxiety. Because I'd worked as a pet shipper for uh, 10 years and given everybody so much advice on it's no problem, it's easy to do, the animals are fine, and then I shipped my own pets and realised what they were going through. <laughs> which led Lindsay to set up her quarantine service. So the procedure for an animal to come into New Zealand starts six months out. So it's a long process for them to go through. So the reality is the risk is minute. The only thing we're really doing here is checking the well-being that they are healthy and that the documentation's in order and then they can go home. So the risk to New Zealand is very, very low. The food safety vet visits the centre at least once a week to check on the new arrivals. It's not just till they're on. Oh, I thought I'd done that, 10.8 kilos, that's great. He basically just gives them an overall check-up, so he's making sure the microchip's correct, that it's the one that we've got on all the documentation. Have a look at the microchip. Yeah. Um, he worms and defleas them again. And then one of the main things he looks for is fleas and ticks because they can carry a lot of diseases. Let's go on ahead and make sure that we've got no ticks there, eh? And there's a little flap here that's a good place for them to hide, but he looks beautifully clean. I'm happy to give him the all clear. And touch wood, we've never had an animal that hasn't been able to be released from quarantine. While waiting for their pet's release, owners or carers are welcome and always keen to visit. Stella has been in quarantine for 21 days. It's good to see you. Which means Jeremy can take her home in just nine days. When I first came out here, I didn't have a car, so I actually rode my bike all the way out here each, each day so I could see little Stella here. And then, uh, um, yeah, and then um, I recently got a car, so now I'm able to drive out here. So 
um, you know, you can visit six days a week and I, I, I make it out here as much as I can. The Trido family from South Africa have been visiting their dogs in quarantine for four months. Finally, the day has arrived when they can take them home. But yeah, it's nice to have a whole family back together, or it will be. Yeah, it's going to be good. I don't know who's more excited, actually, us or them or the animals, but especially, I think, with dogs. And it's just bedlam, basically. They just charge through and out the gate, and owners being dragged. <laughs> I love animals and I just love meeting them all and I'm probably more of an animal person than a human person and I just love to have all these animals around and get all the best bits. We get all the fuss and it's like being a grandmother. <laughs> it's great to see Lindsay and her team doing such a good job looking after people's pets until they get to go home. Well, next up, one of our quiet heroes. Lesia Rice runs a rescue operation for an animal she just loves. Tucked away in a Christchurch suburb on a Saturday night, at a time when most people are relaxing, Lesia Rice is just starting work. I'm making hay balls. They really like those. And they really like bran with some rolled oats too. Lesia's pets have taken over her front room. Well, they're awake. 26 chinchillas. Because they're semi-nocturnal, she must stay up at night if she wants to spend time with them at their most active. They come from the Andes and the mountainous regions, but even there their numbers are declining. And you want your hay, you think it's treat time. Don't you? Look at that. Hay is very good. It's a fibre that they need. It's got different minerals and vitamins, and it's a good thing for them because it's a long strand. It's good for helping their teeth. Chinchillas love to chew. Not only does it occupy them, it keeps their teeth trim, which grow up to two centimetres a year. And with choppers like these, it also discourages them chewing their own fur. One of the most common problems would be overgrown teeth. And unfortunately, that's what Tansy had. Tansy was Lysia's first chinchilla. Tansy was like 18 months old when I had to put to sleep. Broke my heart. A relationship that inspired the formation of an official chinchilla rescue trust five years ago. If they trust people to look after them and if they don't have that, they've got no one. And, you know, if I see something that I know I can help with, I'll do it. This evening, two of Lysia's chinchillas are going to be adopted by Karen and Jason. Lysia carefully screens each adoptee to make sure the chinchillas are going to a suitable home. And like any adoption, there's paperwork to go through and sign. Do they live longer if they're neutered? No. OK, so it's not like some animals that you should do it for their health? No, definitely not. I went on to Trade Me and asked questions about colour, sexes, what makes a good chinchilla pet. And someone came on and commented about tansies and said there's a rescue, which I was shocked. I wouldn't have thought that a relatively exotic pet needed a rescue. I would have thought people only bought them if they really wanted them. Well, thank you very, very okay. much. Thank you. We'll be in touch, thank you. Always hard when they go. Yeah, lots of love, <laughs> lots of tears, <laughs> lots of heartache, but lots of happy, happy things. Really rewarding. There's another 24 hungry mouths still to feed and vet bills to pay. Lesia has found work that fits in with her pet's hours. I do cleaning work <laughs> um, for a commercial cleaning company. It's really the only way I could do what I do. And it, it's good because it's only a couple of hours early from about like 4.30 that I'm not here. Lysia stays up into the small hours playing with her chinchillas. But when she goes to bed, she stays connected. I have a baby monitor around there in the other parts of my room. And if I hear them calling out, um, I'll come down and see what it is because they make different sounds for different things. People's reactions are quite varied. It's just like, ooh, what do you want those for? What are you doing that for? Or a good on you kind of thing. But it, I don't do it for those reasons. It's all for them and what they need and what I think I can give them. Good night, Chance. After the break, some cats are supposed to be hairless, but not Molly. Jeff is on the case. <laughs> 